hope they're done with their stupid announcement yet. I wonder if you can see me. I have to check in the mirror if I'm actually in the frame. <laughs> oh gosh. This is probably the hardest video to actually film ever. Uh, we'll see how editing Billy will like this video. Yo! In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. Excuse the dark lightning today, it is super gloomy, actually raining outside and super stormy. We are in the midst of rainy season in Japan, which means it's only gonna be cloudy or rainy for a whole month. It's still one of my favorite seasons in Japan. So I'm not going outside, but I'm dressed up for this video and I'm loving it. <laughs> yes, and today I'm finally gonna show you my kimono closet or my kimono storage. And I have been pulling off this video for a year or even longer, although a lot of you have requested it. And the reason is quite simple. I know that some viewers of this video will comment oh your kimono storage is really nice but that wouldn't work at my home and i will just be like i know <laughs> my kimono storage is designed by me and before i built it up i was already wearing kimono for a few years and i knew exactly what troubles i had with the storage i had before that and how to solve that and i knew exactly how i wanted to categorize when storing my kimono and I knew all the measurements I wanted to have in that room. Basically, that room is built for me. If you want to find some advice about how to store kimono a little better or how you could store your kimono, then this is your video. It's just a video to find some advice and that's all. So comments like that are not welcomed and will be probably deleted by me without actually reading it because I hate being told things that I already know. Having that said, I think we could just go into my storage and I'm gonna show you around and how I categorize my stuff everywhere and how I organize it and probably answering some of your questions you have asked me on Instagram or under my last video. And I actually think it's pretty cool to make a Q&A with this because I probably wouldn't have covered all of, que all of the questions you have. Okay then, let's go. Welcome. <laughs> Hi. So this is my kimono closet. You can see it is not huge. It's quite a small, tiny and narrow room. But still, it's, it's my own room. Generally speaking, all of my kimono, nagajupan and bags are on this side. And all of my obi, komono, hakama and other stuff as well as my mannequin is on this side. And before we start, I should actually tell you that my whole closet right now is in summer mode. Um, in Japan, there is something that's called Kuromokae, which is the 1st of April as well as the 1st of October. And that is usually the season where you're supposed to pull out your summer stuff in April and put away your winter stuff and then exchange it again in October. Of course, not every Japanese does this exactly on those dates, but it's more like the season it gives you because um, for those who don't know or if you have never been to Japan we do have very heavy seasons and um, summers are super hot and winters are very cold so you need really both wardrobes in a certain extent so my closet right now looks a little different than it looks in winter and please don't ask me to do the same video in winter again because it basically looks the same, just the placement of my kimono is a little different. I have all my nagajupan hanging here. I was talking about why I have my nagajupan hanging in my how to fold nagajupan video, but it's basically because I'm too lazy to fold them up 
and I thought why not just hanging them up so I did this now for two years have them hanging here and usually when um, what you can see here when it's becoming summer um, my winter nagojupan get all cleaned which means in my case them just taking off the han eri and cleaning that and then put a new han eri onto that and sometimes i also take off the emonuki i always have sewed on on this and um, attach a new one and it's just to make sure that the fabric is still fine where usually the emonuki is over my Nagashupan wear supplies is not so easy to reach out to are all my formal kimonos and I don't have them categorized in size or um, season or pattern or anything they're just all there because usually when you wear kimono formal kimono it is a special occasion and you pull out your kimono a day or two before that so you usually spend a little more time when pulling that out. All my kimono are in tatoshi, that was paper casings. And one reason why you use them is that when light um, touches silk too often, um, silk actually loses color, which is not very nice. And I think at least some of you also ask how I keep track with what kimono is in which tatoshi. And I actually labeled them I don't really want to show my messy handwriting here <laughs> but I do have them all labeled and I'm using a posted tape that can be taken off super easily without leaving any glue on the tatoshi and I have three colors I have green I have yellow that is not quite yellow on the camera but it's yellow and I have red yellow is everything that is summer summerish so right now all of this down to my yukata are yellow and i again do label them with what kimono it is if it's hitoya or samamono and what it's made of and its pattern and the color and sometimes i also add the season into this so I don't get mixed up and a cool thing with those posted labels is that sometimes I mix up the tatoshi, I can just pull it off and exchange them super easily. So um, that is my super cool for. I usually have my kimono categorized in um, season. Um, I do have on the front because this is easy to reach out for. I usually have the seasons that I'm going to wear right now and on top here I have um, kimos prepared for the next season because it's what I'm gonna probably wear next. So right now I have all my summer kimono here and under that I have my hitoi kimono, under that I have my yukata and under that I have kimono I'm currently sewing which is my husband's kimono and one for me. And I have um, my husband's kimono lying down there and a few children's kimono. Although I'm not even planning to have children, but they're just too adorable to not buy. <laughs> On top here, I have my autumn kimono, my pure autumn kimono. On the back of my storage, I have now all the stuff I'm probably not gonna wear that soon. So I have all my spring kimono on top of here because that is the least season <laughs> that is coming. You can also tell there are quite a lot. Although I talked about only having five or something. I was kind of so much into I have to buy more spring kimono. So I bought way too much. And then I have my all season kimono. All season actually just means for me usually they are donuki or awase kimono. So I can wear them from October to April and they don't have a pattern that is distinguished or could be distinguished to um, a season, which means no flowers. It's usually muji or um, geometric um, patterns, things like that. And these are also the kimonos I wear most actually. <laughs> 
and under that I have a mix of winter and autumn kimono that I usually just kimono that look very autumnish to me but I also do wear in winter on the bottom of this I have all my kimono coats haori, dochugi, michiugi, raincoats, everything and I've already folded them and put it put them away nicely um, because I'm most likely not gonna wear them for the next season um, I do have put on top my lace haori because those are something you're gonna wear in summer and I have my raincoats up here because we are in rainy season right now so I'm gonna need my raincoats and you can see I fold them quite compact after folding probably I folded them again in half because um, it just takes so up so much space and I'm fine with my kimono coats lying around like this <laughs> And that was actually also one question. What do you do when you don't have that much space? And the traditional way to fold a kimono is just to bake for drawers. First of all, there is no traditional way to fold a kimono. There's just one way to fold a kimono. And that is that one way. Okay, there are a few more ways, but usually they all take up a lot of space. When you have this very long kimono, I know they're huge, they're about 90 centimeter. So you just can fold it again in the middle and there's nothing wrong with that because, wait for it. Sometimes when you buy a new kimono like this, um, they sometimes even come with the small um, tatoshi because a lot of people struggle with the space problem it's not only you guys it's also a lot of Japanese where space is actually money so um, no one will touch you when you fold them once or twice because we all struggle with the same problems and way on the bottom I have my only hikizuri kimono and I have um, folded this in yogi tatami style. Yogi tatami makes stuff huge and I don't have a matching tadoshi or anything so I'm still looking for something how to cover this up nicely so it's not exposed to the light like it is right now. But usually this room doesn't have any windows so usually there is no light as long as I don't turn it on so it should be fine like this for a little longer. On the other side of my closet you have all my obi. I actually um, have categorized them by color and I display them nicely. So right now on the front of course I have my summer obi again and you can see that I use um, tatoshi for my summer obi as well as for my formal obi who are here on top. And the reason is because I don't use them that often. Um, because summer obi you only really wear them in summer and um, even formal obi is just for special occasions so I have them encased and again labeled so I know what is inside before pulling them out I can just check okay that is this one okay no no so I can see what I'm actually looking for and for my other obi I go without tatoshi because it's easier for me to have them displayed. In my styling video, I already talked about that. I usually um, choose my um, all my outfits, starting with the kimono. That day I get dressed, I'm always like, oh, I wanna wear that kimono. And when I have my kimono, then I choose an obi. So it's way easier to actually have all the obi displayed so I can just grab one I like and think that's probably matching my mood today and um, matching that kimono. On top of this I have my hakama here. I don't wear hakama that often so they're usually the place I can reach that easily and on top over there I have all the things, accessories I don't use very often like shigoki, aprons, scarves for winter. So that's all up there. And then I have my Hanhaba Obi 
lined up like this, a little KonMari method like. Um, I put them up like a bookshelf because I just really didn't have any space. Plus, I tried a lot of different methods to actually pile them up nicely, but it always looked awful, so I went with this way. And what I also have here is what a lot of you struggle with, as well what I struggled with a long time, are my obijime. I have them actually stored vertically, like so. Um, I have them in those bags, um, they're think nylon and they're quite a mesh weave so um, it can actually breathe, um, that was very important for me. And yeah, I have them then um, sorted by color. And yeah, I store them like this, this is not the best way to store them. I would also love to have a whole drawer and just line it up next to each other nicely. Um, Although I have this room, I still don't have enough space for that. And now let's get into my Komono drawer. On top, I have all my obiage and I have on the front the obiage I use a lot during the year. On the back, I have all shibori. Shibori, I really obiage don't use that often, so they're just rolled up here. And then I have some lace here and all my summer Obiage. I don't feel like summer obiage recently, that's why I haven't still pulled them out, but I'm probably gonna e exchange it with one of those and just line them up here nicely. And then there was also a question, how do I store my nezuke and obitome? I actually have, in a 100 yen store, I have, have bought these casings, um, so they're nicely displayed. You know I'm not a big plastic fan, but it's just cool to have them displayed nicely. I don't have a lot of obitome, I think, so I just have them separated um, by color. So I have warm colors and cold colors. And then when I have a cold colored outfit, I pull out this one. If I have a warm colored coat outfit, I pull out this one. And my nezuke and also my haori himo are in another casing. But I don't have too many of them, so I think this is just perfect how it's stored. My next drawer is my little catastrophe, <laughs> disaster drawer. Um, it is all the komono I need for wearing a kimono. So I have different obi ita here, one for my musubi and the one I usually use. And I have different sizes of obi makura in here. Then I have all my elastic belts here. You can see I have a lot of them. <laughs> I really have a lot of them. And a self-made um, obimakura for koken musubi. These are better. And then I have all my ties in here. You can see how messy I have them. Usually these hexagon um, way to store it is best. I love this um, a lot, but usually after I wear them every day because this is what I tie my um, underwear up with and then I wash them and they just get wrinkly and I'm not a big fan of ironing besides sewing, so I only press my seams and that's the only time when I actually touch an iron. So they're just like this and I think it's fine. You can see there are many ways to store your stuff. and. Don't try to do it right, just do it as you feel comfortable with. And my last one, my last drawer are tubby, then all my um, tissues that I um, use when I go outside. Um, you know, when you go eating, you should cover up your obi and kimono. And um, then I have my hosegi that I'm not wearing in here kimono padding, Hosegi is Japanese for that. And all my kimono underwear is in here. So this is basically my underwear drawer. And that is it. So, okay, so I thought let's just sit down and answer the rest of your, the rest of your questions I haven't answered yet. You can see, yeah, I have pinned my mic into the phone. We do not care about that too much right now. Um, I have screenshots of all of your questions and let's see, there were some really good questions. 
oh i like that this one is from anna um who's supporting me for a few years now thank you so much um i store my kurotome sore just like a regular kimono is it right or do i need to store it in another way there is nothing wrong with storing your kurotome sore or even furi sore in the same way you store your kimono you saw my formal kimono stash it's absolutely the same way as I store um, my normal kimono and I have talked about this actually in a previous video because I received that que question quite a lot and you can check that out I will link it down below where I talk also about what yogi tatami is and how to store your fudi sore properly mm, I love that one a few one asked it actually but um, I'm gonna put all of you on screen, um, but representative is Claudia Williams. She asked, um, if you don't have enough tatoshi for all your kimono, what do you suggest putting between each kimono to protect the fabric from rubbing? What I often see in used kimono stores is that they have um, a thicker piece of paper um, between all the kimonos. So you could use that um, i'm not sure if it's an acid free i would probably recommend you to wrap that in acid free um, tissue paper but i'm also not sure if all tatoshi are actually acid free paper i am i would never be 100 percent sure with that but um yeah so you could you could just store it on another piece of a thicker paper not like the really thin one Oh yeah, good question. Um, Keith Virgin, Keith, I'm sorry if I said something wrong, asks, I just bought a kimono with a spot of mold. Should I put vinegar to kill it? And if I do, is it safe to start with my other kimono? Mold is just the death of every kimono and I actually would recommend you to bring it to a professional. And we all know that is something you can do when you're not living in Japan. Make your farewell with that kimono before putting the vinegar on it. That's what I do when I experiment with how to clean kimono at home. I usually do my farewell before that and I already I am emotionally prepared that I'm probably not gonna get that stain out or just make it worse. No, do not store it with your other kimono. Only when you're 100% sure um, the mold is out you could start to store it but you're never 100% sure because um, you don't know how deep the mold is in the fiber and that actually would affect your other kimono. A lot of you ask me the same question. Um, how do you prevent bugs from eating, damaging kimonos and obvious while in storage using natural products? Oh, I don't use natural products to be honest because I think they smell and I don't, I, I have a really sensitive nose. I use, this is not sponsored, no commercial. I use Mushuda, it's my very favorite Japanese brand. They are a little more on the pricey side, but they work best. Another thing is to actually, is that bugs and moths actually don't eat silk. That's why you shouldn't put them together with wool kimono. That's why you should store your um, wool kimono um, differently from um, silk kimono. Could you please mention if there were any significant changes to it in the course of history? You mean kimono storage history? I know that in history a lot of um, Polonia um, closets were produced because Polonia is apparently a good um, wood for storing kimono because it absorbs humidity around it and it has a smell that moths and bugs don't like. Oh, that is one for on the natural... Um, against moths thing. Polonia is definitely a good way to deal with humidity and bugs. Before we move to this house, I actually had a Polonia storage for my kimono and one made of sakura trees. That both of them I will have to sell. If you're interested, tell me. The sakura one is huge, so you would have to be in Japan. Oh, how to protect your kimono against high humidity? Having the place you store your kimono always aired. Kankisen is the only thing I can say. In Japan, it's actually said that even in rainy season, when you have 
humidity up to 90%, you still should open the window at least once a day and have it open on the opposite side. So have open south and north or west and east. And then um, the wind will just go through uh, as well as the humidity will be carried out actually with that wind, but you still have fresh air in the room. That's what usually people tell you in Japan what you should do. So having air airing the place, even if you have high humidity, air it. Just the wind moving through that room will change so much. Uh, Zia Papaya asks, what is the best way to store them with limited space? I have so many piled on top of one another. It's hard to see what's there and I also worry about the weight of of all the fabric impacting upon the folds of the kimono. Same problem with me. We share the same problem. You can see I pile them up like crazy. It's just because I have limited space, although I have a lot of space with a whole room. So I think um, just pile them up as much as you want to and give them a nice flat iron from time to time. Usually the best thing you could do is one rag for one kimono. <laughs> and the most eccentric kimono storage I have ever seen with just really one kimono on one rag is a very famous kimono blogger in Japan, Kimono Kantabire. She posted pictures of her kimono storage, I think two or three weeks ago it was, uh, I still can't get over that picture. <laughs> oh my god when you think my kimono storage is huge i'm nothing compared to here <laughs> oh my god i totally can't read your name it was a question on instagram i'm gonna put the um, comment in here is it better to hang or have kimono folded of course it's better to have your kimono folded how do you know if a day is too sunny to wear kimono outside first of all there is no day that is too sunny to wear kimono outside why should it be i mean hundreds of years ago kim people wore kimono every day there wasn't a day too sunny or too rainy so just wear it i'm just gonna call you saku panda because it's uh, i remember your name <laughs> can i stock them on boxes in boxes with anti-humidity and anti parasitic and take them out for fresh air sometimes or do I have to have a special place for storage no you can put them in plastic boxes that's fine I did that in Germany too I had it in plastic boxes that were huge and I had them under my under my bed and they had kind of little rolls under it so I can just pull it out and put it back um, I do recommend that by the way so for me, that was a good a good way to store my kimono in Germany, under the bed. <laughs> Neko Kimono, also Instagram, asked, do you put your kimono the day before wearing it on a hanger? What do you think of this method? I've never heard of this method and no. How often, how long should we ventilate, I would say air, kimono in European climate? I think it would be the same in Japan. I'm usually it's said to do it once half a year or at least once a year, but once half a year when you do kuromogai, actually a lot of Japanese magazines do recommend you to air your kimono. By the way, I air all my kimono after wearing them and have been hanging there for a day. And I think everybody thinks I am that organized and put my kimono away after having it hanging a day. No, sometimes they're hanging here for a week and then I have five kimonos hanging here because I was wearing five kimonos during that week. Just super lazy. This one is definitely one I wanted to include in this video. Stories with fashion asked, how do you store them for transportation if you are taking them on a trip? I love that question. I actually wrote a blog post about this and never posted it. I'm probably going to do it next week or something because I will have to take pictures. I usually take them with me in something that is called furoshiki, which is a huge kind of tissue, I would say. So I lay the furoshiki in front of me and then I lay everything on top of it. First, I start with the kimono and then I lay the obi on it, obi age, obi shime, everything I want to wear with it. And then I just fold the kimono around that and hold this up, tied up with my furoshiki. And that is how I put it into my suitcase. 
You probably have noticed in this video that kimono storage is something you could talk ages about. Um, when we have a little kimono joshi, kimono girl meet up, we usually talk ages about how we store our kimono, how our kimono storage is organized. And it's always a fun way to talk about our kimono. And it always gives you more advice and more ideas of how to store your kimono probably a little better. When you have further questions about how to store kimono, feel free to ask me down below in the comments or send me messages on Instagram. A video about how to wash and iron kimono will come in the future, I promise. I just... <sighs> It will be so much work for video, so probably a month work video. It will come. Just be patient with me, please. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you want to see more kimono content from a certified kimono teacher, feel free to subscribe and I talk to you in my next video. Bye!